Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, May 1st, 2020, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, uh, Optimal Health Associates. So, um, follow up to my post the other night um, about that, those ER physicians. Uh, they actually did get repudiated by the American Academy of ER Physicians and several other umbrella medical groups, so it's not just me. It's the entire medical community has said they're essentially idiots. Um, the problem with them is they're, if the line of information goes this way, their line's just slightly off and they sound very convincing so it can suck people in um, who don't understand the differences between immune response and immune function and how it all works. So for those of you who don't understand that, watch my, which is totally normal because it's a complicated thing and I had to review it before explaining it. Again, just to get my uh, nomenclature using all the words correctly. Um, but it was obvious to me they had missed the entire point. So, but one of the things they got criticized for, which I didn't think was a fair, was their financial interest. So if you're put, did, doing a peer review journal article that gets published, you list your financial interests. If I'm giving an educational talk to a bunch of doctors um, or nurse practitioners who like that, I list my financial interests beforehand. That, that's because I'm giving formal education. And so we don't, in a Facebook thing, I don't think that's really important. I think that's an unfair criticism. But you know, just to be clear so that doesn't happen to me, I'm a gynecologist, I'm in private practice. I've been in private practice my entire career, 25 years. Um, I have six people who I work with who are nurse practitioners and PAs, plus I have two partners. We see about 3,000 patients a year in my, or 3,000 patients a month in our practice. We're incredibly busy. We take care of an extraordinary number of diverse patients, including um, with a focus on menopausal medicine, internal medicine, endocrinology. Um, we see, uh, we have thousands of male patients too. We do a ton of diagnostic stuff because my practice has evolved over the years. My background was I went to Ohio State where they taught us that you're a doctor first and happen to be a gynecologist or a neurosurgeon or whatever second, you're always a doctor and so you're a doctor. And that's how I was trained. And then being an OBGYN and during the heyday of malpractice, we had to take care of every single thing a pregnant woman had. So we had to do all the intensive care with help, of course, but all of it, all the endocrinology, all the surgery they might have, again, with general surgeons help sometimes. And we did everything for them, did all the insulin. So I've had a different training than a lot of people. Um, and a different background. I was in the U.S. Public Health Service at the peak of the AIDS crisis in uh, 1987. I actually wrote the paper for um, prevention of hospital-based or iatrogenic spread of HIV um, for the FDA and the CDC and the NIH. Um, now I had a ton of input it, and then it got subsequently uh, evolved over the years, but that was something I did. I mean, so I have a really uh, pretty interesting background and it's just luck you know it's things I'm interested in because um, I actually went to medical school originally to go into public health or be a psychiatrist and voila I became a gynecologist who knows but be that as it may that's how things work in medicine you can have people who think about one thing and then their careers evolve it's normal so let's talk about things we can do to normalize society I think getting back to normal is everything I think kids can go to camp this summer kids can go to college this fall the virus is going to be with us for years on end. We're not going to have a vaccine for 12 to 18 months. And when we get a vaccine, don't hop on the bandwagon and get it. Let everyone else get it first to see what happens because they're going to be rushing and pressuring to get this vaccine through. And the last thing on earth you want to do is something that affects your immune system and you don't really know it's safe. And safety takes a year or two. Okay, so what can we do to go out and be normal? Well, one, I've talked about supplements. Uh, Simple thing, zinc raises your alpha interferon. That's been shown to be the primary immune fighter against this virus and of viruses. Number two, melatonin. Melatonin stops your innate immune system from over revving. That's what kills people. So you're on melatonin, which is what little kids have. You're on zinc and a multivitamin. Your innate immune system is gonna be pretty normalized and tuned up. We have supplements at my office. To be clear, you can Get them anywhere you want. Don't get, you don't have to get them from me. If you want to get them from our online store, I'm fine. But be on a supplement. Be on them. But what else can we do? Well, I want to thank Dr. Vince Montgomery, oral surgeon in Norman. Great guy, great surgeon. Very eclectic. 
in that he is a holistic oral surgeon, which is very rare. He thinks about things like probiotics, mouth rinses, things to prevent surgery and damage to the teeth and cardiovascular disease from bad teeth. Very interesting, wonderful clinician. And so he was talking to me about prevention for dentists and had suggested some things with nasal rinses. So I did a, a literature search, just that's how I got started with the zinc, was a literature search from <coughs> Dr. Jeffries um, via uh, Norman, uh, Dr. Norman Imes. And lo and behold, there's all this great data on prevention of infections uh, and allergies with nasal rinses. rinses. So this is uh, the Neal automatic nasal rinse thing. We, I've had this for years. Um, you hit the button. It makes this horrid noise, but unfortunately you're like this and the water, or the, not the water, the distilled water with the Neal mix goes, blows through your nasals, nasal sinuses and gets things all normalized. Or you can use something like this one. This, I mean, we've had these, this kind of stuff for forever. This is just another brand, um, alcohol, something or other, alcohol. Uh, and then you uh, put that and you put it in here and you go, like that. So all of it's a little embarrassing to demonstrate, but if you do a nasal rinse every day, number one, you're going to decrease your allergies. So everybody in Oklahoma should do it. And it knocks down the importance of allergy medicine, potentially even allergy shots for your, your face um, and your sinuses. And then it decreases inflammation, which in turn makes you more resistant to viruses. If you then just want to do it periodically at the first sign of a virus, you just do start doing the nasal irrigations once a day with things from when I was a kid. My mom made me do salt water rinses and it's going to knock down the virus. I included three different papers on the, on the written post I did about an hour ago on Facebook, on Facebook, on Facebook, written post on Facebook, sorry, um, with the journal articles. And so you can reference those if you want to read about them. The key thing with nasal irrigations are that you have to use distilled water. You don't use tap water because tap water can have amoebas in it. That's very rare, but it's possible. And when you're putting things through your nose, the blood brain barrier right up through here is very, very thin at the nasal pharynx. So if there's amoebas in the, in the water, because the water's not distilled, it, they can break through that barrier and get in your brain. It's very rare, but it's definitely happened. No one needs an amoeba in their brain. It will kill you. It's icky. Let's avoid it. Distilled water, very simple. Um, and then you put a Neal packet in or you use a product like this. Um, the Neal packet stuff, I've just used that for forever. It works very well. And when you do the mix uh, as directed, you get a nice isotonic saline, which means the saline has the same content, content of sodium as your bloodstream or your plasma. And you want to use an isotonic or slightly hypertonic solution or a little more concentrated. Either one's great. You don't use water by itself, distilled water by itself because it's an irritant then. You need the saline, so you want to have those components. And if you do that regularly, you're going to decrease inflammation here, you're going to decrease your allergies, you're going to decrease the likelihood of infection. And then if you crank it up, if you get infected and add the saltwater rinses, the data shows it decreases the intensity of the infection. So simple stuff, and it's all about simple stuff because we need to go and re-engage in society. This virus is going to cycle through multiple, multiple times, the antigenic vari variations at the protein spike. We're going to get the virus a bunch of times. Okay, Some are going to be less intense strains. Some are going to be more intense strains. But if your immune system's ratcheted up correctly, you'll be fine the vast majority of the time. So that's the goal, being able to, to be normal. We have to get the country going. We have to re-engage with our friends. We need all that to get going. And so we, how do we do that? It's wearing a mask when you're in public and going around. It's taking your vitamins. It's using these nasal rinses. And that's going to be super helpful for prevention of disease spread. Um, so again, very important. And why is it important? We had, I think, 1,700 people die yesterday. We had 2,400 the day before. Um, we're at 63,000 in the United States now. We had eight more die in Oklahoma yesterday. We had 130 new cases. And so the way it works, so if we, and we had about 27,000, I think, new cases yesterday in the nation, figure 6% of those people are gonna die. Now that's been the classic number. It's probably gonna go down because we're doing a little more testing of people who aren't as sick. 
but figure 5% of those people are going to die. So now they're going to not die tomorrow, but they'll be dying a month from now because it's the course from infection to death is somewhere between three to four weeks. So about 5% of 25,000, so about 1,250 people. So we're still going to be running about 1,000 to 1,500 people a month from now. We unfortunately, I, I think, are going to go over 100,000 uh, people. I was hoping we'd be uh, under 80, um, which was something I had promulgated or predicted, I thought, with the use of the Plaquenil um, early in the course, but that has not been adopted. So, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but the FDA has made the decision it's only to be used for uh, in studies for people who are already sick, which I've gone over and said it's too late by then. It's for prophylaxis and early use. And since the FDA doesn't want to do that, um, there's no studies being done. And there's this constant barrage of negative information about the Plaquenil, even though there's really good data showing that it can be helpful. Be that as it may, our death rate's going to be higher. And again, I would always, again, point back to the failure of our public health system uh, for prevention for this and that's why we had to do the lockdown so if you get mad about the lockdowns don't get mad at the governors get mad at anthony fauci the nih the cdc and the fta for completely blowing it and so it put everyone into reactive mode remember we never should have been seeing any of these officials on tv they should never be on tv they should have done their jobs behind the scenes to save us they didn't so be that as it may so summer camp things like that Summer camp should be fine. Little kids aren't getting sick with this. Um, going to college should be fine. They're not getting sick and they're not transmitting it either. And so that's something we'll dwell a little more on um, over the next few days. I'll also be talking about Bill Gates' comments, which I didn't have a chance to uh, listen to today, but I, I've heard they're very interesting, so I'll review that and give some thoughts on whatever he said. He's brilliant, and so, you know, I've always... Uh, thought what he's been doing with this in this area has been very interesting and it's been a and it's been a concern of his for years and so he uh, kind of had some premonitions that this could happen sooner than later just with the mass of humanity so we'll be going to all that good stuff um, a big shout out to all the teachers who are working away and all the health care providers and all the police officers and all the people who are keeping our society going uh, big thank you no, we couldn't do it without you, and I'm very glad things are starting to open up. I'm just praying my uh, barber or hairstylist will get me in sooner than later because I'm desperate for a haircut. Anyway, and I don't have the power of Governor Stitt to, to uh, recruit someone into my house, so um, I just have to wait my turn. So good night. Have a pleasant weekend. Bye.